Greetings! So, I'm here to continue my talk about my religion. Um, in particular, I'm going to talk about how we're going to graph uh, equations of two variables. Um, and in the most generalized form, this is an equation of the form f of xy equals g of xy. However, notice that we can turn any equation of this form into the following form, h of xy equals 0. In some sense, we're finding the roots of a function of two variables. So this is all fine and dandy, but how do we do that, right? There's, we can, we can use our interval arithmetic for sure, but the issue with interval arithmetic, there, there's two issues. One of them is just simply speed. Interval arithmetic is pretty slow in comparison to normal arithmetic, so it takes a while to compute. Um, another important consideration is um, what's something called the dependency problem. So suppose we have the equation x equals y. So in this form, that would be y minus x equals 0. All great. Right. So we can use interval arithmetic. For example, we can see if we, we put in y equals, say, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.7, sorry, and x um, to be like 0 0.8, 0 0.9, then we could correctly deduce, because this minus this is going to be, what, negative? is not in that, we therefore know that there are no solutions of this equation for between y between the and x between the So that's great, except for this called the dependency problem. What if instead of x equals y, we do x equals y plus 1000x minus 1000x? So this is the same equation, but if we try to plug in x here into this, um, this interval will become 800, 900. This interval will become 800, 900. And so when we subtract them, we'll get... problem has caused this thing to have a much wider interval than the true interval, which is just zero, right? So this is a big issue with interval arithmetic. So our solution is to use something which I've called contouring. I think that's the that's, that's the that's the commonly accepted word for it. So suppose we have some function h of x comma y equals zero, and we want to find its contours um, in in well, suppose we sample the function h at four points in a square like this. Now, if this is po if this if it's sampled positive at all things, then there may or may not be a root in this square. However, if for example this is negative and this is negative, then assuming the function is continuous, there must be a root somewhere here, and there must be a root somewhere here. Furthermore, we can estimate the position of the root, assuming local linearity, by basically doing like if, if, if this one is if this one was five and this one was ten, for example, then we can wait, push the root two thirds of the way along this vector, and that will be approximately where the root is, right? So, with this method, we can actually find roots pretty easily. We don't know exactly where they are, but we know approximately where they are. So, the first approach for contouring. To take this, take the plot grid and sample it a bunch of times. Sample the function h all over the plot grid. And then once you've sampled it a bunch of times, you calculate the signs, and then we can figure out where the contours are based on where the roots are. So we have a root here, we have a root here, we have a root here, and we can basically based on where the contours are calculated to be, we can just draw those lines. The issue with that is that this works very well, it's much faster than interval arithmetic, but if you were to sample it everywhere along the, um, the plotting space, it would take forever, just like our interval arithmetic. So what we do is we actually use a combination of interval arithmetic and this technique. Man, the music's loud.
He was trying to drown me out, but I have the I got the last laugh. Um, so what we can do is use a combination of interval arithmetic and contour. So suppose this is our plotting grid. Then using interval arithmetic, we deduce that, for example, there's no maybe no solutions in here and no solutions in here, but there are potentially solutions in here. And we recurse, say, oh, maybe there's solutions in here, here, and here and uh, solutions in here, here, and here, but no solutions here. Then, once we've identified these portions of the graph, we can, we can do that really quickly, because interval, we've only evaluated intervals like maybe 10, 20 times. Then, we start using the contouring. So then we subdivide into a bunch of samples and do the contouring from there. And with this method, we, we sort of combine the best of both techniques, both the contouring and, um, and the speed of the interval arithmetic. So this is great. Um, another optimization that we can do to contouring um, is to vary the depth to which we uh, calculate contours. So um, there's a, it, given this, this function h, x, y equals zero, we calculate the radius of curvature of this function at a given point. And the expression for that is a little complicated. It's basically a function of um, the, uh, various derivatives of the function. I, I, I believe it's f, uh, not f, <laughs> hx squared plus h partial y squared, all to the three halves, divided by hxx squared minus 2h, oh man, xy? Ah, oh, I forgot, I forgot the actual expression. But something like this, right? It's some complicated expression of various partial derivatives of h. And we can calculate those partial derivatives based on our symbolic differentiation, which, which we can already do. So once we have the curvature, what we can do is we can subdivide at a variable amount uh, proportional to the radius of curvature. Or sorry, in, uh, not proportional, um, inverse of proportional to the radius of curvature. When the radius of curvature is large, like this, then we don't have to subdivide as much because we can approximate this by, less, by, by, by lines of lower density then of something of radius of high, of, 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 of radius of curvature that's very high, we need a higher density of lines here to draw that. So that's another optimization that we can do for um, contour, contouring. Um, but together, this represents a pretty robust solution. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all cobble graph lines and graphing. Not lines, graph equations and graphing.